In this video, we're going to take a look at the Namiki Emperor. So let's jump straight to the end with my thoughts on this pen. This is a pen that ruined me for buying pens. It is, for me, perfect in absolutely every way, and it takes going out of my way to find something I don't like about this pen. Ever since I purchased this pen, uh, I haven't bought another pen. It's not that I don't see pens I don't want, it's that I don't feel a need to get that pen while I have this one. And it's not like I'm looking at getting rid of this one anytime soon. So I run into that problem of I don't see a need to get an another pen. It ruined me. It doesn't mean that down the line I'm not going to get another. There are pens I have my eye on. But everything about it, the way it feels in my hand, the way it feels while I write, it's all perfect. So to me, this answers the question of, are those very expensive pens worth it? Yes, absolutely. I know a pen down the line I really want to get is the same pen, but in the vermilion finish, if it's still around, and if not, I'll seek it out on the aftermarket. Now that we know how I feel about the Namiki Emperor, let's see how I got to that feeling, starting with the unboxing. The Namiki Emperor came in a box like this, which contains a box like this, which contained a bottle of Namiki Blue like this, except it was full when it arrived. This pen brings luxury from the get-go. Getting it out of the box is an experience that you get to have. It doesn't just get unpacked. You really get to experience unboxing a truly fantastic pen. And I know a lot of people don't care about the boxes, and I tend to, because I like to use them. This box, I have found a place to keep it on display, because it's that nice. With the pen out of the box, we need to get to the nib. And as long as it doesn't take 20 turns to uncap it, I'm generally okay. So how many turns does it take to uncap this pen? The Namiki Emperor came in a box like this, which contains a box like this, which contained a bottle of Namiki Blue like this, except it was full when it arrived. At one and a half turns, this truly is right in my sweet spot. I can't ask for anything more, and I did say, after all, this is a perfect pen for me. This gets us to the nib. This pen has a gold medium fine nib. Seeing the nib in pictures doesn't do it justice. It is absolutely enormous in the pen, in person. It really dwarfs any nib next to it. Even the Pelican M1000 nib looks diminished next to this nib. If you enjoy videos like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Now, let's ink this pen up. The Namiki Emperor is an eyedropper fill fountain pen that holds approximately 5 milliliters of ink. The ink of the day is Sailor Celebration Red. I think before I said it holds 5 milliliters of ink, when it holds more like 6. And this is the only pen that I have managed to fully ink up and not wind up writing it out of ink in an entire day. And I almost filled an A5 notebook 
in a day of note-taking, and this pen kept going. As a habit, I don't normally post my pens, but some people prefer to post pens, and some pens need to be posted to use comfortably. Technically, you can post this pen. There is no cap band. It'll go on. That's the first time I've ever put this cap on the back of this pen. I don't do it because of the finish. I don't do it because it doesn't need it. I hold on to the cap. I write, it is plenty large enough, plenty thick enough, great pen without posting. I think if you post this pen, you're a heathen. Is that too much? Now, the important part, the writing sample. Now, I really did almost fill an entire A5 notebook in working on projects and doing research. And that entire time, my hand felt no fatigue. It was absolutely amazing to me to be able to do that much writing. And it has a lot to do with a bunch about this pen. How girthy it is in the hand doesn't make you want to hold tight. A very slim pen has a tendency to make me want to hold it much tighter, which that's a me problem, but it means that I experience hand cramping, not something that happens with this pen at all. Also, the larger nib allows my hand to be a little bit farther from the page, which puts me a little bit more relaxed. Now, I don't post this pen ever because that would look ridiculous without a doubt. So even when we get to the pictures, it's not going to be there. This pen is so good, it gives me a smile every time I write with it. The feedback of the nib on the paper is absolutely perfect. It is right where I want it to be. For some people, they're going to want smoother and then get it smoothed, and that's perfectly fine, but I like to know that I'm writing, especially since I frequently use nicer and smoother paper. So the feedback is in my benefit. Now, if I have to come up with something negative about this pen, and at this point, you're fishing for something, it's that putting it in a shirt pocket, it doesn't stand straight up and down because of how large it is. But to have a problem with how it fits in your shirt pocket when you know you're getting a pen this large is really going out of your way to find something negative. It does answer that question of if the price is worth it. Yes, it is. Now for something a bit more standard in comparing writing size. I use Namiki Blue to do this. Here's how it compares to a Yovo Extra Fine on the left, a medium in the middle, and a 1.1 stub on the right. Being a medium fine nib, I really did expect it to be a little more towards medium, and thankfully, it's more towards fine. Really does make me very happy with it, because me, I tend to enjoy using fine nibs or broad nibs, but not so much medium, so I was a little worried about it, even though I knew I could always get it fixed. So how does it compare in writing size to other nibs I've used? Looking at the writing sample of a Namiki Emperor with a medium fine nib, here it is next to a fountain pen Revolution Guru with what writes about like a medium nib, a Pilot Metropolitan with a medium nib, a Schaefer Pop Yoda, which is says medium but writes a little bit finer than that. This is a fountain pen Revolution Muffed, which writes about like a medium nib. 
and a noodler's nib creeper, which writes about like a medium nib. So it isn't a review without some size comparisons. Here it is capped. Here it is uncapped. And here it is posted. Now in the size comparisons, there was no picture of it posted. And that's because this pen posted is comically large. There's no reason to ever have it posted. I don't post it at all, not even for the second that it would take for that picture. It is not just longer, but it is much girthier than any other pen that I own. Before we can ink this pen with a new ink, we need to clean it out. Be sure to check out the next pen review video where we take a look at the Noodler's Charlie. If you want to be able to support not just my channel, but any reviewer, then when you make a purchase, be sure to tell that retailer where you heard about it. Thanks for watching.